Sports City, Sports City, Chef, you, Chef, Sports City, Sports City, Chef, you, Chef, yeah, Cabby, Taj. <laughs> Yes, 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 the Sports City Chefs. Welcome to another edition of the Finger Foods. I am the villain himself, Barry Jordan, here with you on exclusively on the YouTube channel on our Sports City Chefs channel. If you like what you hear, hit the subscribe button, like, comment, so that you can get more videos and more content from the chefs. Uh, we have shows all week on our SportsCityChefs.com, blogs, interviews, website, all that good stuff. <sighs> I was going to do another sad song to open this show, but it's not even worth it. Uh, the Giants, yet again, embarrass themselves with an uh, underwhelming 30-10 to 10 loss on Monday Night Football against the defending champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Tom Brady and company. The Giants are what their record says they are. They are a 3-7 and seven team. Going nowhere fast, headed for the NFL draft, hoping to land some something in the draft because this team is not headed to the playoffs. Giants were coming off uh, winning two of their last three games, going into a bye week coming out of it against a team in Tampa Bay that had lost uh, their last two games, uh, one uh, to the division rival New York uh, Washington football team. Um, and the Giants came in and were pushed around and, and thoroughly embarrassed by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, they couldn't get anything done as early as today. As I'm doing this show, the Giants announced that Jason Garrett, offensive coordinator, had been relieved of his duties. No longer the offensive coordinator, Freddie Kitchens, former uh, uh, Cleveland Browns head coach, will now fill in interim as the offensive coordinator but I mean this time this team uh is whatever can go wrong will go wrong either it's players not being healthy they can't protect uh the quarterback they can't get a pass rush on the quarterback they can't run the football they can't tackle penalties um you know mental mistakes uh mental lapses of coaching bad play calling whatever it can be this is what the Giants do to to embarrass themselves throughout the game and we are where we are we were we thought we could build off of last year off of a 10 and 6 uh, season where we had got better down the stretch and instead we're looking into the top half of the draft and a lot of questions to be answered like I said the offense struggled uh, mightily as a uh, Todd Bowles and the Bucks defense really frustrated and confused uh, Daniel Jones throughout the game. Uh, Daniel Jones had a really underwhelming stat line where he was 23 of 38 for 167 passing yards, had one touchdown to a lineman and two interceptions, but just didn't play well at all. Um, the play calling was a big problem, and you could see today that the Giants addressed that, but he, it, to hang it on uh Jason Garrett is kind of unfair to him. I don't think he is the the end all be all, but uh, th I'm looking at Daniel Jones right now, and I'm seeing a quarterback in his third year just repeating the same habits that we thought that he could get away from: staring down receivers, not reading defenses, um, forcing it into bad coverages. Uh, making mental mistakes, not taking care of the football. Uh, he threw a, a, one of the easiest interceptions you'll ever see to a lineman on a screen pass. It was embarrassing. Um, he had his weapons back for this game after the bye week, but the biggest problem is that the offense can't design a way to get those playmakers the ball, and the d offensive line can't stop anybody. Will Hernandez had one of his worst games after I had kind of sung his praises and said he was one of the more, at least the, he was the most consistent lineman from a health standpoint and and from his, his play. He had a really bad game. I didn't get the full um, pro football focus uh, grade on him, but uh, he had let up two, a couple sacks, five pressures, uh, had a couple off uh, false start penalties. Just a really terrible day. Um, you know, Nate Soldier getting pushed around by JPP, Jason Pierre-Paul, the former Giant, who had one arm 
essentially, and were still able to push him around and get pressure on Daniel Jones. The offensive line had a terrible game. Really not. And it's hard to evaluate Daniel Jones when the offensive line plays that bad. But I, I watched Daniel Jones not only target Kenny Galladay twice in the game. Um, had to design plays to 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 get it to open players because he can't read the defense. A nice wheel route to uh, Kyle Rudolph. But if it wasn't for that, he, would he have seen him? Probably not. I'm looking early in the first half, in the first quarter, where the Giants were driving. Um, the score was 7 nothing On a first or second and goal, uh, Kenny Galladay streaking over the middle, wide open. All he had to do was throw it high, no safety over the top, and get a touchdown. He forces it to the sideline to, to Kadarius Toney and uh, force an incomplete pass. Another um, red zone opportunity missed. They had to kick a field goal. Um, it's frustrating to watch Tom Brady effortlessly, effortlessly move the ball down the field. Now, I know this is Tom Brady. He's uh, the greatest quarterback um, that's ever played, at least in my opinion. Um, but I watch a lot of offensives move the ball easily down the field, not just on the Giants, but in general. And the Giants just struggle with the simple things, and they've been struggling like that for years. Uh, it feels like moving the ball meticulously down the field. Uh, some of it is play calling, but, uh, you know, Daniel Jones has got to take some of that blame too. Um, you've got to be able to make the right reads, hit guys, get them in the right position to make plays. And, and just it's, everything just is a full mm -hmm. circle. There's, it's the chicken or the egg. You don't know what the cause is. You don't know if it's the offensive line or the play calling. But, I mean, at the end of the day, Daniel Jones has been here for three years. I've seen enough. I don't know if this guy is the the future of the, the team. I, I don't know if you can go in the draft because there's nobody there, but I don't know what I don't know where you go from here with Daniel Jones. Um it wasn't all terrible on offense. I mean they, they, they were terrible as far as trying to get uh points on the board, but it was good to see some of the faces back on the field, albeit they didn't have uh, a great game. Andrew Thomas, the big offensive tackle, our best lineman was back after a five game injury. Um, really played well against JPP and Shaquille Barrett. Um, you know, easily probably graded one of the better offensive linemen uh, for the day. Even got a touchdown catch. Uh, so it was great to see him out there moving around. Um, he he is a cornerstone that we can build our, our offensive line around. But the fact that De Gettleman has not been able to build an offensive line um, s since he's been here. Uh, missed on so many draft picks and missed on so many um, free agents. It's time to go. It's time to clean house. Uh, Kadarius Tony, he looks like he's going to be a player. Um, everybody wants to compare him to Odell Beckham Jr. It's not a fair comparison. He's he's a, a little bit of a different receiver, but he's electric. When the ball is in his hands, especially in the open field, he is a sight to behold. I mean, he was making moves, making nothing out of something. Uh, I think there was one catch he caught as a, um, a flare screen um, where it went for about a two, three-yard loss, made a couple moves, and got five yards out of it. Um, just an electric player. He finished with seven catches for 40 yards. Um, but the fact that it took you three weeks to figure out that this guy needs to get the ball in his hands is a problem, and that's why Garrett is no longer the offensive coordinator here. Um, it was good to see Saquon Barkley back in the field. Uh, really missed him after that brutal ankle injury against the Cowboys. And then he was on the COVID list. Um, you know, the offensive line struggled to open holes for him. Um, he finished with, uh, I think it was about 50, 56 total yards of offense. Um, 25 yards rushing, uh, 31 yards receiving. Um, but... It's like once he, he, he can't get it going, you know, he gets catches out of the backfield, he gets tripped up or it, it's, it's just, he, you know, you want to see more from him. And I think you can build an offense around him or at least have him a big part of the offense. Um, but it's just frustrating that Garrett just can't figure out how to you, you have a guy in the backfield, you can hand the ball off to and you can't figure out how to do it. Um, that being said, Joe Judge came out and basically, after the game, laid it on the coaching staff. You know, the players got to execute 
but he, he this is his quote. Players have to execute. That's their job, right? It's our job to teach them. It's it's their job to go out and execute. But we've got to make sh- sure we put them in position to have success. That has to be consistent, by the way. So you can go ahead and write that down. I'm not going to debate that. Basically, shots fired, and um, it came to a head today as Garrett was fired, as I said. Um, the the coaching staff was out coached by Bruce Arians, by Byron Leftwich, and Todd Bowles um, on all phases. The defense um, couldn't get anything done. The offense just could not move the ball after the first half, after the first quarter, I believe. Um, they couldn't do anything. They got a lot of yards and garbage time, but you couldn't even get in the end zone. Um, you know, it, it's it's really yes, it's execution. Players are open. Daniel Jones is not hitting receivers down the field. But you can't figure, you can't tell me that you've signed a receiver to over $40 million and you can only target him two times, three times if you count a penalty uh, on the defense. Um, that's unacceptable. You got to figure out ways to get guys involved. And there's a lot of star receivers that get the star treatment with double coverage. And, you know, Devontae Adams is the prime example, but he still gets his stats. He's still a, a monster. Uh, Stefan Diggs, the, the list goes on. Keenan, uh, Keenan Allen, I saw last, you know, on Sunday night. It's 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 just frustrating, and 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 there's there's change coming, and there's a lot more that's going to be on the way as well. Um, the defense really struggled. Um, you know, basically Tom Brady, he's seen this defense a million times. Took what the defense give gave them. They were playing too deep zone, trying to get, stay keep everything in front. Um, it was a good game plan if you can get pressure. They couldn't get pressure. They got one sack in garbage time against Blaine Gabbert um, when, when Tom Brady was out of the game in the fourth quarter. Um, the Bucks were able to run the ball. They got 94 yards rushing, three, well, just under four yards of carry. Um, they were able to control the offense by – control the, the pace of the game by running the ball effectively, screen passes, underneath passes. Tom Brady just moved the ball methodically and just was in complete control. Never was – under duress. If he was, he was patient, um, under under – under pressure, he was calm and hit the right guys. That I mean, that comes with years of experience. Don't get me wrong, but um, it's it's really a marvel to watch guy, quarterbacks like him, really who understand the the defenses and really are under control. So, um, outside of a interception by Adoree Jackson on a deflection, it was really a busted play, a really bad play. I think the receiver was in Mike Evans' way and they hit off of his shoulder pads. Uh, the Giants capitalized to get a touchdown off that. But other than that, the Giants were never really in this game. It was tied 10-10 at that point, but they weren't in this game. They they really had no shot, to, and the defense did as much as they could. Ke- kept them to 30 points, I'll give them that, but really couldn't uh, slow this offense down. Chris Godwin had a really good game. Uh, Mike Evans ca- uh, caught a touchdown. Gronkowski was open over the middle quite a bit. Fournette catching the ball out of the backfield. They just could not stop the, the beverage of weapons. And it I, some of that is goes on Patrick Graham, but I think the game plan was sound. I think if they were able to get pressure, especially with the defensive line that we have with Leonard Williams, uh, you know, Roche, Quincy Roche, and, and uh, Aziz Aljuri, the rookie, weren't able to get pressure. You're talking about um, a, a Bucks offensive line that was banged up, especially at the guard position, and and I think they had lost a guard during the game. And Leonard Williams could not get any pressure. And when they did, Tom Brady just slid out of the way and, and made made plays. It's just frustrating. Um, you know, the defense just could not get it done and could not execute. So it's on to week 12 against uh, our hated rivals, the Philadelphia Eagles. Um you know, I'm pretty sure the, the Philly Philly podcast will be uh, harassing the villain at some point. Um, you know, the Eagles are playing some some solid, inspired football right now, winning their last few games, especially last week um, where they really put up some points against the New Orleans Saints who are headed in the wrong direction themselves. But uh, the Eagles looking to, to stay in the playoff hunt. Um, I think they're five and six. They are in the hunt. Giants are not. Um, the Giants have a lot of soul searching to do. Um, it's pride right now and playing for next year if you want a job. Uh, next man up and, and next team up. So with that being said, thank you for listening to the Finger Foods, New York Giants. Um, we got beat. We stink. 
uh, onto the draft. Uh, Jason Garrett is not the first. Uh, he's the first, but he's not going to be the last. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of casualties going on. But uh, get to the website. Uh, subscribe to, um, on YouTube channel. Subscribe, like, and comment, as we always encourage you to do. Get to the website. we got blogs, interviews going up all week. Um, this week we have, tonight we have the NFL free-for-all. Uh, with Sirius and myself, and then we'll be on a little bit of a break for the holidays, but then we will be back uh, to talk more sports on this Sunday brunch, recap the Thursday uh, Thanksgiving games, and talk about the slate of games coming up, and uh, the crossover cafe and all that good stuff. So tell a friend to tell a friend. It's the chefs again, if you don't know. Now you know. Sports city, sports city, chef, chef. Sports city, sports city, chef, chef.